Well, good morning. It's good to have you all up here. It's like a big hug um, <laughs> and one big family a little bit closer together. Um, thank you for coming uh, to worship today. This is our third series on Godly Play. This will be our last story of this series. And this theme today is the story of the exile and the return. Um, and so we'll, we'll wonder together about what this story means and what it means for our lives. So um, as we do some of the different um, elements in the godly play, we'll have a time for wondering out loud together. We'll also have a time uh, for some creative response, either with art or through music. Um, and so we just invite you to be fully present here, knowing that God meets us here while we wonder and play and worship together. So let us uh, take a moment to center ourselves and be present in this space as I light our Christ candle and we remember that God is with us. My name is Candy, and I'll be your worship leader today. If you would join me in the opening prayer. When we pass through the waters, God is there with us. when we suffer and feel hopeless, God is there with us. when we are joyful and celebratory, God is there with us. whether we feel triumphant or defeated, Let us pray. We thank you, God. And if you would rise and body your spirit for our hymn, um, it can be found on page 154, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. And we'll be singing verses 1, 2, and 4.
going to invite you to be seated and to get ready for the story time today. You can get ready if you want to come a little forward. If you can't see, I invite you to do that now. That's one way of getting ready. And then another way of getting ready is to just quiet ourselves um, in prayer. And so I'm going to do a little prayer as we begin. And then we'll listen to our story time together, which is a story from our sacred scripture. And then we'll have a little bit of wondering time after that. Um, And wondering time is where we wonder together about the story. And sometimes that wondering is inside. And we don't want to share that with other people. And that's okay. And then it's quiet. And sometimes that wondering is outside and out loud, and we can share with other people, and that's also okay. And so during the wondering time, I invite you, whether it's inside or outside, um, to share um, and, to, and to wonder with me. Um, and then to make sure we allow time for other people to share out loud and wonder if they want to. So let's take a moment to pray the prayer I've prayed each week. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know that. Be still and know. Be still and. Be still. Be. Amen. Now this that I have with me here is our piece of the desert. We can't fit the whole desert into our sanctuary, but we have a little piece of it with us. Now the desert is a dangerous place. No food or water is in the desert. And so people can die in the desert. When the wind blows, it changes the shape of the sand. So it's easy to lose your way in the desert. During the day, it's very hot, and the sun can scorch your skin. The wind can blow sand, stinging your face and your hands. And at night, it gets very cold in the desert, and you have to wear many layers of clothing to keep warm. The desert is a dangerous place. People don't go there unless they have to. Here is Jerusalem. And these are the walls of the city. Inside the city is the temple of God. Here are the people of God in the city of Jerusalem.
The people of God know that God is in the temple. They thought that that was the only place where they could pray to God. Now at that time, there were two great rivers, the river Tigris and the river Euphrates. There was a city, a great big city called Babylon in the city of Haran. Now the people of God thought that these city walls could protect them from anything. But the Assyrian army came and they attacked the city and it was a terrible time. The people fought and some people starved to death. But finally, the Assyrian army went away. Then the Babylonian army came and they attacked the city and they did not go away. The king of Babylon wanted the city of Jerusalem for himself. And so they knocked down the walls of the city and they burned the temple and they carried away many of the people from Jerusalem. The soldiers marched the people outside of the city. And when they turned around, And they looked at the city of Jerusalem and they saw the smoke rising from it. They wondered if they would ever go home again. So the people had to follow the soldiers. They had to get up when the soldiers said get up. They had to walk where the soldiers said, walk. They had to eat whatever the soldiers told them to eat. They had to go to bed at night whenever the soldiers said. They had to do whatever the soldiers told them to do. They were weary, and some of them died. It was a long, long journey. The people of God were in exile. They could no longer go home. And so they kept going with the soldiers. (coughs) Finally, When they reached Babylon, there on the banks of the river Euphrates, they hung up their harps on the weeping willow trees and they sang sad songs. They dreamed of Jerusalem and the temple there, but they could not go back. They faced Jerusalem whenever they said their prayers. Eventually, the people of God came to understand 
that God was in this place too. And that God's presence was with them when they gathered to read the scriptures or to tell the old stories or to pray. Now the king of Babylon allowed many of the people of God to work. Some of them opened little shops and some of them worked for the king. It came as a shock when the king of Persia took over the city of Babylon. The king of Persia began to allow some of the exiles to go home. So some of the people went with Ezra. And they, well, they rebuilt the temple. Then the king of Persia allowed some more to go. And these people went with Nehemiah. And they, well, they rebuilt the walls of the city of Jerusalem. The people of God were no longer in exile. They could go home. But you know what happened? Some of them stayed. They knew that God was in this strange and foreign land. And so some of them stayed because they knew that God was here and there and everywhere. Now, I wonder what part of the story you like the best. I wonder what part of the story do you like the best? The part where God is everywhere, and they learn that. What other parts of the story do you like the best? I like when people were able to go back and rebuild. When the people were able to go back and rebuild. I liked the part that they worked together when they went back. They worked together to go back. I wonder what part of the story is most important. The same for you, that God is everywhere. It's kind of the same thing, but God looking out for his people. God looking out for them and being with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're wondering. I wonder who you are in the story or where you are in this story. The 
this one is sometimes harder to say out loud. But when I introduced this story last week, I said it was my favorite story that I've told. And so I feel like I can tell you why. <laughs> um, many times when I was a child, we were, uh, we were told we had to move. And it was always uh, being told. And it was always a... Um, felt like an exile. I would not have used that term as a child, but we were told to move. We had to leave from our home. We had to go to a new place. And there was always that journey of grief. And then there was always that discovery of what is in the new place and that God is there and that friends are there and that good things are there in that new place too. And so I have felt like I have lived this journey of exile quite some time. Is there any part of the story that we could just, you know, take away and have all the story that we need? Anything? Maybe that people left in different groups, maybe they could have all gone together or... Mm -hmm. Some of them went with Ezra, some of them went with Nehemiah, and maybe they could have gone together. What do you think about that? Here in this story we have Babylon and Haram and Jerusalem. We have the rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates. We have the people of God, the people, the family of God that we are also part of. And we have the desert where lots of important things happen to God's people. Thank you for wondering and listening to this story with me. I think we have now a hymn that I invite you to sing with me, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken, verses 1 and 2, number 731, in your red hymnals. And then we'll have our response time, which I'll explain in a minute. invite you into a response time and some of you who have been here the last few weeks uh, will know what the options are but some of our wondering and some of our prayer and some of our response to the stories happens when we we are creative or when we let our hands move or when we sing and use our voices and so we have a time in the service for responding and um, we invite you if you want to be part of the hymn sing which uh, means that you can um, tell Millie a hymn that you would like to sing, <laughs> a verse from the hymn, and then you all will sing it together. We're going to invite you to move that gold fabric, take your hymnal, and go back and sit in that place um, for the hymn sing time. For those of you who would like to respond with art, um, Alice is standing over there. 
Perhaps you want to draw um, your favorite part of the story, um, or perhaps you just want to let see what happens when you move your move your, uh, your your marker on the page. There's also Play-Doh for those of you who want to mold something. Um, and there's also journals if you want to just write perhaps a prayer of response to the story. Um, so that's the activities over there. There may be a few other things that you can do. You can find out when you go over there. Um, the other option you can do is I'm going to move the sand to the altar space. And if you would like to recreate the story and, and move the people of God around, um, you are, there's a couple people who can um, to do that together. So we're going to take about seven minutes, and then we'll come back together sitting back here and have our time of prayer and our feast time. So go and respond. Thank you. 
everyone to put back your art supplies and come back and gather for our time of prayer. There are many different ways to pray and many different types of prayers. And today I'm reminded that it's the last Sunday in what is often known as Pride Month, um, which celebrates the love of all people. Um, a couple of us walked in the Pride Parade uh, a, couple Sundays, a couple Saturdays ago, representing University UMC and our uh, commitment to be a reconciling congregation. And so as um, this is our prayer today, I want to remind, our, uh, remind us of our reconciling statement that we have proclaimed to celebrate the gift of diversity in all ways. And then as we pray today, and I know this might be a um, different way of prayer, um, I'm going to invite us to pass the chain around, um, the chain that represents uh, the suffering and the sadness of people, the chain that is, um, represents people who feel like they can't go home, who are exiled. And so if, as you hold on to the chain, um, you're invited to pray something out loud, either a people or the name of someone that you'd like to pray for, 
Um, or you can pray in your hearts and just pass the chain to the next person. But we're going to pass the chain around, and I, I trust you can, you can find its way to all people and then back to me. Um, but before I... Um, I'm going to read our statement. We're going to sing um, our uh, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, our call to prayer song, and then I'm going to begin to pass the chain. So here is our commitment as University United Methodist Church. We celebrate God's gift of diversity and value the wholeness made possible in community equally shared and shepherded by all. We welcome and affirm people of every gender identity gender expression, and sexual orientation, who are also of every age, race, ethnicity, physical and mental ability, level of education and family structure, and of every economic, immigration, marital, and social status, and so much more. We acknowledge that we live in a world of profound social, economic, and political inequities. As followers of Jesus, we commit ourselves to the pursuit of justice and pledge to stand in solidarity with all who are marginalized and oppressed. the oppressed and the marginalized. Hear the prayers of your people today. For those who feel like they cannot go home. God, you have heard the prayers of the heart of our hearts and the people for whom we especially pray today. We know you as the God who is not just here or there, but the God who is everywhere, the God who is always journeying with us, the God who enters into our suffering the God who breaks the chains of injustice, the God who sets the oppressed free, the God who returns the exiles home, the God who is with those who stay in a strange and foreign land. God is your people. We pray for all who are oppressed and marginalized today. And we pray that you would help us keep our commitments, live out our commitments to be a reconciling congregation, which is one who stands with all those who are oppressed and marginalized in solidarity, in welcome, and in love. We give you the prayers of our hearts today, and together as your people, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. Now we come to our time of feasting together, which is our time of Holy Communion. And so I'd like to remind us as we gather that this table that we gather around is the table that belongs to our Lord Jesus Christ. And Christ would invite all who would like to receive a gift of love and grace to come to this table and receive this sacrament, which is today some bread. And we invite you to dip the bread into the juice and return to your seats. We also have um, gluten-free wafers and cups of juice if anyone needs that. As we come to the table today, I just invite us to come in rows and then return back to our seats so that we avoid chaos at the table. Let's see if we remember our responses to the great Thanksgiving, just the first part together. Um, Starts with the Lord be with you. Okay, we're going to be good. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right, and it's a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image, and you breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity. You made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. We remember your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and he ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering and death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. We remember that on the night before, he gave himself up for us, a night of both celebration and betrayal. Jesus took the bread left over on the table He blessed it and broke it and commanded those who love him to eat it and to remember every time they broke bread after that it is in the breaking that we become whole, that in losing our lives we find them and in serving we are served. And likewise, after they broke the bread, Jesus took a cup. He lifted it and blessed it and commanded them to drink it and remember his lifeblood poured out as a living grace for them and for all who would receive it. And every time they drank of it after to remember that grace that was poured out for all, for all who would receive it. So we pray with boldness and in our, our own need that you would come upon us, Holy Spirit, and on these gifts of bread, and cup. Make of them the body of Christ brought to life in our sharing and the blood of Christ to nourish us in the works of witness and justice to which we have been called. In our fellowship here, may our eyes be opened that we may recognize the strength and the communion between us, that from our memory of your faithfulness we may find renewed hope for the journey to which we have been called that we may recognize as pilgrims together in this journey towards justice, we might see each other and all whom we meet as those whom you've named and claimed as your beloved. All this we ask in your name. Amen. As the grain scattered that scattered becomes one loaf, when we eat of this bread, 
we become one with each other and with God. A sharing in this bread is a sharing in the body of Christ. And as the grapes find life in the vine, when we drink this cup, we become at one with the source of life itself. I'm going to invite those who are helping me serve today to come forward. you pray with me? Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given your very self to us. Grant that we may go into the world nourished by your very body and spirit to give ourselves in love. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Rebecca, I know she just sat down, but she has our mission moment for today, so we invite you to come and share with us at this mic just so we can hear you, um, how you have witnessed God or love at work in the world recently. So, hello. Good morning. So, I'm uh, Rebecca, and um, in general, just as a preface, I like to consider myself an imperfect Christian constantly practicing, never quite getting there. Um, and so I feel like I see God's love through grace. Um, during the pandemic, my sister and I were lucky enough to be able to continue to work remotely from home. And so during that time, we started family dinners again. And um, every night, 5.30, 6 o'clock, all of us together, and we would say grace and sit down and Think of the things that we were thankful, not just for our meal, but for everything that was provided to us. And through that gratitude and that practice of grace and realizing God's grace that was given to me, being an imperfect Christian, I saw God's love. And we've continued that practice every day, being grateful, practicing gratitude. So through grace and God's grace is where I see God's love daily. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Just have a couple opportunities for connecting with one another and for serving to share with you. If you brought any spices, please um, bring, bring them today and put them in the basket because we'll be taking them to the food pantry and then we're going to take a little break over the summer um, before we collect again. Um, also, Today we have a luncheon outside, a potluck, so we hope that you all can stay um, and join us. I think we've set up in the shade, at least it was an hour ago. Um, the sun might have moved, but um, we, do, we do invite you to stay and share in some fellowship at the tables with one another. Um, we are going to be passing out to tables if you would like them. Uh, tables are not obligated to do this. Uh, some questions that were some conversation starters that um, we have used during some of our table talks. So if your table would like to see some of the questions and talk about them with one another, we would, we'll bring them around to you once everyone is, is seated. Um, we also have one more um, fellowship opportunity over food coming up. Um, you'll see it in your bulletin. It's July 9th, so in two weeks we have a barbecue outside. Um, we have a, a couple who is seeing their own ministry as providing meals and fellowship time for churches and talking about um, the agape love of God, which is the love that... Um, that doesn't require repayment, it's just grace upon grace, as Rebecca was talking about. Um, and so that is their, their um, 
experience of agape love and that is what they want to offer and so uh, we have yard games for that day um, and we hope to have a picnic outside with yard games um, if you have other yard games we only have a couple we invite you to bring your favorite uh, sort of outdoor game and we'll have a wonderful time of fellowship and music we have music coming um, and outdoor fun together um, also in July, just a heads up, I think it's July 16th, we have our next loaves and fishes meal. Um, about three of our regular people who cook and serve that are out of town on vacation. So we do, if you are able to uh, help that day, please let the office know as soon as possible so we can arrange that meal and make sure that we have everything that we need covered. I think that's it. Is that it? I think that's it. All right. Um, as we uh, prepare to go eat, I invite us uh, to stand in body or spirit, to rise and sing together. Jesus calls us, verses 1, 3, and 5 on number 398 in the red hymnal. Thanks for Millie, who is playing the piano today when Dana is away. <laughs> so Dana will be back next week, and <laughs> we celebrate that too. Um, let us receive this blessing, and may it be the blessing for our meal as well. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace.